The new season 1 of Doctor Who was highly anticipated by fans. The 60th anniversary specials were very well received and it was the first full series under Russell T Davis since series 4 in 2008. So fans were rightfully excited. In this video I'm going to break down my opinion on every episode. In this video I'm going to be talking about the church on Ruby Road because I never ended up actually talking about it when it came out. The Church on Ruby Road In 2004 on Christmas Eve, a baby was abandoned in the snow outside a church on Ruby Road. Today the child is now named Ruby Sunday and is having a difficult time with some bad luck. Ruby ends up meeting the doctor. Goblins steal a new baby that Ruby's adopted mother has fostered. Ruby and the doctor must venture into the goblin's flying ship in order to retrieve the new child. This story was the first Christmas special since 2017's Twice Upon a Time. A lot of Doctor Who fans were incredibly excited for a new Doctor Who Christmas special, especially one written by Russell T Davis. I think this is a pretty good Christmas special, but after some of the past Christmas specials, there are no high bars. Space Babies Ruby learns the Doctor's amazing secrets when he takes her to the far future. There they find a spaceship which is used as a baby farm run by babies. The ship full of children is being terrorised by the bogeyman, which lives in the lower levels of the ship. Can the Doctor and Ruby save the babies from the terrifying bogeyman? I don't think this story is very good. It's not the worst story of all time, but it's not good either. I think the babies in the story are incredibly annoying and with them having a fair bit of screen time you tend to notice the strange mouth animations on the characters. I think this story would be improved with having more human characters for the Doctor and Ruby to interact with. As for the villain, I think the moment when the story is at its best is when the Doctor and Ruby are alone in the lower levels of the ship with the bogeyman. I think with these parts of the episode the story almost feels like a version of Alien, but obviously for a much younger audience. Overall, I think I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. It's not great, but I think we've had worse Doctor Who stories recently. The Devil's Chord The Doctor and Ruby decide to go and meet the Beatles, but discover that the all-powerful maestro is changing history, causing a human hatred of music. The Doctor and Ruby must defeat Maestro and save music. London becomes a battleground with the future of humanity at stake. God, I'm going to get so much hate for my opinion on this episode. But here we go. I can't stand this story. But before I get into why, I'd like to state something. This episode was like my dream story for so long. I'm a massive Beatles fan. And as you are probably aware, I'm a massive Doctor Who fan. And the concept of a combination of these two things that I love is something that excited me. Anyway, getting back on track with why I'm not a fan of this story. I think this story is amazing when it's taking itself seriously. But when it's going a bit camp and ridiculous, I think it, I think it becomes really annoying. Another reason why I'm not a fan of this story is Jinx Monsoon as Maestro. What, what, oh f*** off. I think that Jinx Monsoon's acting in this story is far too over the top and I can't take her seriously. This is an issue I always have with Russell writing villains, especially his depiction of the Master and the toy maker. I feel like Jinx Monsoon, I think if Jinx Monsoon had dialed it back a bit, this story would have had so much more of an interesting villain and I think it would have really pushed that plot to another level. I think there are other issues with it as well, but I think the villain is probably the biggest issue with it. Overall, I'm going to rate the story a pretty low 4 out of 10. Boom. While caught in the middle of a devastating war on Castron 3, the Doctor must figure out how to save himself, Ruby and the entire planet after he steps on a landmine and finds himself unable to move, at risk of not only his own death, but the death of everyone on the planet. This story marks the return of one of my favourite Doctor Who writers, Stephen Moffat, who once again hasn't made a return since the Doctor Who story, Twice Upon a Time, in 2017. 
I think Moffat is one of the best Doctor Who writers and he proves it by returning with one of the all-time best Doctor Who stories. This episode's this episode features some very clever Doctor Who logic, very reminiscent of the Doctor Who story Blink in some respects. The episode feels like the best of the Moffat era, the clever episode set in one location with more of a focus on the psychological side. If this were to remind me of any other story, I'd have to insist it's very similar to Heaven Sent. Overall, I'm going to rate the story a high 9 out of 10. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I want Moffat to come back here with series 2. The 73 Yards Landing on the Welsh coast, the Doctor and Ruby accidentally break a mystical spell shrine. After this happens, the Doctor disappears and Ruby is haunted by a strange woman who permanently stays 73 yards away. Ruby tries to move on with her life, but she is drawn back into a life of adventure when a politician referred to as Mad Jack becomes Prime Minister. This story is a brilliant little Doctor Who story and in my opinion is almost perfect. I've always wanted to see Doctor Who do more little horror stories and I think this episode pulls it off with a spectacular amount of success. I'm actually not going to go into much detail on the story because I simply want you all who haven't seen it to go watch it. But if you want to know what I'm going to rate the story, it's going to be a 10 out of 10. It's perfect. Dot and Bubble The world of fine time seems happy and humorous, but an awful terror is preying on the citizens. Can the Doctor and Ruby make them see the truth and bring them to safety before it's too late? This story gets so close to being very good. However, I believe the story does actually fall short. I think this essentially because the story has certain aspects that would work so much better as a six part Doctor Who story in the classic series. The story is pretty good, but I want to see more of it. Overall, the story does just fall short. I want to see more of the characters. I want to know who the villains are. I want to see more of the location and the mad technology. I want to see the Doctor come face to face with the villains. Overall, a disappointing five out of 10. Rogue. The Doctor and Ruby land in 1813, where guests at a Duchess's party are being murdered, and a mysterious bounty hunter called Rogue is about to change the Doctor's life forever. The Doctor, Rogue and Ruby must team up in order to defeat the evil Chunder family. This story feels like a filler episode. It all, it's almost like they had the idea for doing a gay love story featuring the Doctor, and that's all they had for an episode. Besides an oddly placed cameo from Richard E. Grant's Ninth Doctor, this story was actually a bit dull. I don't really have much to say about it. 5 out of 10. The Legend of Ruby Sunday The Doctor and Unit must investigate Ruby's mysterious past. As the new Unit invention, the Time Window, reveals horrifying secrets from Christmas Eve 2004, the mysterious triad technology unleashes the greatest evil of all, which has a strong connection to the Doctor's long past. This story was so good at setting up for the end of the series, and brilliantly brought together all the threads and mysteries from the rest of the series, which had started in the church on Ruby Road. The story's villain is a mystery for most of the story, with multiple red herrings along the way. However, the revelation of the true villain of the story being revealed to be Sutek was an amazing twist and is partially out of nowhere, but also brilliantly set up and brilliantly executed. Overall, this episode of the series is amazing setup, 7 out of 10, but the bar has been set high for the true finale of the series. Empire of Death The Doctor has lost at the hand of his ageless enemy, Sutek, who now reigns supreme, and the shadow falls over creation. Nothing can stop the devastation brought upon the universe except one woman. Wow, why didn't I predict it was going to be like this? Modern Doctor Who 
has an issue with the finales. Essentially, their problem is that the setup with the first part of the finale is great, but when it comes to the second part, they always fall short and end up not matching with the first part. The problem can be seen through nearly all of the new series, going back to the 2006 finale. This finale in no way matches with the hype built up by the brilliant first part, and dare I say it, this episode kind of drags its feet, especially with the whole part when the Doctor is talking to the woman who has no memory. The story also feels like it rushes with how they deal with Sutek in order to get to Ruby finding her mother and all the family stuff. This is something that Russell has always done, especially in his first era on the show. Overall, this story isn't actually the best and in my opinion, probably a 5 out of 10. So I'm going to go over how I feel about Nishuti's performance as the Doctor. I think it goes from being one of my least favourite incarnations to one of my favourites, scene to scene. Essentially I think he goes from playing the character very camp and very silly to actually being not too dissimilar to Patrick Troughton. His doctor does get pretty annoying at times and I was getting aggravated at all the crying by the end, but I am interested to see what he does with the role in the future. If I were to compare Ruby to any other Doctor Who companion, I'd say she's like a more likeable version of Rose. After the episode The 73 Yards, I really started to like Ruby, and in fact, I was sad to see her leave at the end of the series. The way the Doctor and Ruby interact is kind of an oddity within the series. Like the Doctor himself, I love how they interact in some scenes, and don't like it in others. In many ways, it's very reminiscent to a classic Doctor Companion interaction, but in some cases, I think it goes way too over the top into camp territory. I'm now going to show you one of my favourite Doctor and Ruby moments, then straight after, I'm going to show you one of my least favourite. Alright, Ruby, alright. Oh, no, 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 don't step! Almost broke that. Careful. Oh, honey, what a beautiful thing. What is it? It's a, it's a fairy circle. Man, that's so delicate. Just charms and spells and hopes and dreams. It's here at the end of the land. Oh, well, yeah, what did they say? No, 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 no. But give them their respect, Ruby. Let them rest in peace. Like your mysterious woman. Oh, she was there. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we are here. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, right, oh, people always say the Titanic <laughs> or Mars or oh. Bethlehem, <laughs> but the Beatles. <laughs> February 11th, 1963. No way, mm -hmm. really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. If we're in the 60s, what about my clothes? Good thinking. Overall, this series has a mix of episodes. Some that I really enjoy, some episodes that I really didn't enjoy, and episodes that I found really middling. But you know what, I'm alright with a series like this. I know Russell is trying to make Doctor Who appeal for a different demographic, especially with the show now being on Disney+, and dare I say it, I'm alright with that. With a series even with their with this series even having episodes that I didn't like, there are still episodes that I love, and in future if we can get more episodes like the 73 yards and boom, then I'm going to be good. Thanks for watching.